Hey guys, Natalie here. Today, I want to keep it classy and talk about some classic paintings. Let's take a tour through art history and explore some of my favorite paintings that feature gemstones. All right, I'm gonna bend some rules right off the bat. This first painting doesn't actually feature a gemstone, but rather a precious metal. And to be honest, this is way more than a feature. It's a full-blown art medium. I'm talking about Gustav Klimt's masterpiece, Portrait of Adele Block Bauer, AKA Woman in Gold. This painting was the last in Klimt's golden phase and is by far the most famous. Not only is our subject wearing a gold dress, the portrait is done with gold leaf. I couldn't say just how much gold was used, but at least enough to be listed as a medium in the painting, along with silver leaf and oil. If you paint with literal gold, you want to include it in the write-up. That's like composing the 1812 overture and not writing canons with all the other instruments. Klimt was inspired to use gold in his painting when he took a trip to Ravenna, Italy, and visited the Basilica of San Vitale. Inside, he was greeted by a brilliant gold mosaic of Emperor Justinian and his wife Theodora, who ruled the Eastern Roman Empire in the 6th century. Justinian has a golden halo and is clad in Tyrian purple, one of the most expensive dyes in history. It's made by processing the glands of thousands of sea snails, ew, and is very labor-intensive. If you want to hear about some of the minerals and gemstones used in pigments throughout history, click here. You might be surprised at how important gemstones are to art history. Klimt made hundreds of sketches in preparation for the real thing, and the whole process from beginning to end took almost four years. When it comes to working with precious material, it's better to measure twice and cut once. As for the oils, they make up only 12% of the painting, the portrait portion. The majority of the rest is done with a technique of gold and silver leaf, with designs and motifs done in relief style, kind of like the raised faces on a coin or cameo, but we'll get to that later. The designs take inspiration from several corners of the art world. The eyes on the dress are Egyptian, the coils are Mycenaean, and we mentioned where he got the gold idea from. The observant among you, or those who've seen Woman in Gold, the movie about the story of this painting, may have noticed the choker around Block Bauer's neck. Choker? Uh, more like chonker. This impressive necklace was real and was made of diamonds, and it belonged to Adele Block Bauer, and after her death, it was actually given to her niece as a wedding gift. It wouldn't be hers for long, though. A few short years later, the Nazis invaded Austria, stopping at the Block Bauer residence along the way. Five Klimt paintings were taken, as well as any jewelry they had, which included the fabulous necklace. That went to the commander-in-chief of the Luftwaffe, who gave it to his wife. They even took a Stradivarius cello. As we all know, the Nazis lost and the paintings eventually found a home in the Belvedere Gallery in Austria. After a drawn out legal battle, the paintings were returned to Maria Altman, that same niece who received the diamond choker from her aunt all those years ago. The painting was sold shortly thereafter in 2006 for a hundred and thirty five million dollars. Next, I want to talk about another famous painting. This one also had a movie made about it. I'm talking about Girl with a Pearl Earring. Unlike our last one, this painting, done in 1665 by Johannes Vermeer, is entirely in oil paints. No precious metals here. It was selected by the Dutch public in 2006 as the most beautiful painting in the Netherlands, and I have no objections. The painting is a trony, a 16th or 17th century Dutch term roughly meaning face. It's related to a French slang word for mug or head, and it describes a style of painting that typically displayed exaggerated facial features or stereotypical characters in costume. The girl is wearing an exotic turban, and for that reason, the painting was referred to as girl with a turban for quite a while. The turban as a fashion item became a bit of a European trend because for about 100 years or so, so was fighting the Ottoman Empire. While that is a nice bit of trivia, I'm of course more interested in her jewelry, specifically her earring. Look at the size of it. That's one big pearl, but it's not the biggest ever. If you want to learn about the largest pearl ever discovered, click here. This is not Vermeer's only painting featuring jewelry or even pearls. He loved to paint his subjects with all kinds of necklaces and bracelets, and pearls were one of his favorites. The models in Woman with Pearl Necklace, Study of a Young Woman, Girl with Red Hat, and Girl with a Flute are all bejeweled. 
In fact, he painted 21 images of women with pearls. But why pearls? Well, for a very long time, pearls were reserved for the ultra-wealthy. In fact, pearls were highly valued up until the 1900s, when cultured pearls were finally developed. Until that point, pearls were considered just as valuable, if not more so, than some of the gemstones we revere today. It's written that Roman Emperor Vitellius financed an entire military campaign by selling just one of his mother's pearl earrings. Pearls were considered a symbol of purity, and since they came from the sea, they carried an air of mystery with them. And if your model wore pearls, that aura was sort of transferred to them, making for a more interesting painting. Recently, however, there's been some question as to the true nature of the girl's earring. In 2014, a Dutch astrophysicist suggested that the earring is more likely polished tin, given its size, odd pear shape, and its apparently high reflectiveness. In fact, if you really zoom in, it's hard to even make out a hook. The earring is just kind of floating there, below her earlobe. The Dutch didn't like that, however, and he lost half of his Twitter followers overnight. I'm kidding, but he does make a good point. That pearl is awfully big, really shiny, and its lack of a wire all add to the mystery that make this painting so beloved. That said, girl with levitating polished chin sphere below earlobe doesn't really sound as nice. I'm happy to accept that it's a pearl. Lastly, we have a far more recent painting, and one of the most iconic to ever come out of the States, American Gothic. You've likely seen this one before, or at least a parody of it. Since its reveal in 1930, people have been drawn in by the stark expressions of the subjects. Artist Grant Wood asked his sister, Nan, and their family dentist to stand in and model for him. Most people assume it's a husband and wife, but it's actually Amy Schumer and J.K. Simmons. I'm kidding, of course. It's meant to be a father and daughter. When the images of the painting first spread across the country, the general consensus was that the painting was satire, poking fun at the tight-lipped Puritan stereotype of the Midwest. Naturally, the Iowa locals were upset. The painting badly needed a PR boost, and it came from an unlikely source. With the onset of the Great Depression, the pair came to represent the steadfast and stoic pioneering spirit of America in the face of economic disaster. This is fine. Much later, in 2019, a cultural writer described the painting as a portrait of Pluto and Proserpina, Roman gods of the underworld. I mean, I know he's holding a pitchfork, but isn't that a bit of a stretch? Well, maybe not. Take a look at the brooch on Nan's collar. It's a cameo. Cameo artwork is an ancient style of carving an engraved gemstone or piece of jewelry. They're typically made from shell, banded agate, or onyx. The carving of cameo is very difficult, and artists remove varying amounts of material to reveal the different color bandings. But one wrong move and you may have to start over. There's really no undo when carving a cameo. Traditionally, cameos feature scenes or faces, particularly of Greek and Roman rulers and myths. This brings us back to the cameo in the painting. Some people claim that the face in the cameo must be Proserpina, wife of Pluto. Okay, now the pitchfork is starting to make sense. All right, guys, that's all for today. Tell me, what little Easter egg would you leave in a portrait of yourself? Leave a comment down below, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell. We don't want you to miss out. Thanks for watching.